one thing I did want to mention, just as um, uh, hopefully it won't lower the tone or make people sad, but it's about a uh, motor trade charity, Ben. Yeah. Um, I'm not being sponsored by them or anything like that, but I just think they, if you haven't mentioned them before, they're the charity for the motor trade. Where if you are, yeah, what if is you it about? I've, seen, I've then, seen the name bandied about, but I've never known the details of what it's actually about, though. Yeah, so it's literally a charity for for the motor trade. So whether you're not just sales, whether you're service or MOT or delivery driver or valeter or anything to do with the motor trade, they'll they'll look after you. Um, and the only reason I'm saying it, I've heard about them before. They do like a a bangers for Ben where you buy a car for 500 quid and go across Europe and then sell the car afterwards and all the money goes to them to, to help with the charity. But I bought five cars from a, from a guy in um, up North last week. Who's they were father and son. And that's why, that's why it got to got in my head so much. They were father and son. And um, oh, hadn't the dad died unexpectedly. Was that the one where the dad yeah, died it was unexpectedly? That, it, out, it was actually, and I've, I've spoke to the guy and asked if I'm all right to talk about it. Um, it was actually suicide. So oh, yeah. the, I know we all laugh and joke on this podcast, but obviously the motor trade is a bloody hard trade to be in. Um, we do obviously reap the rewards if we're doing it correctly, but it, it's a bloody tough job to be in seven days a week, isn't it? Especially when you've got your own your own business. So <clears throat> I just wanted to put Ben out there because if there is anybody watching, and obviously you do get quite a lot of eyes on this channel, then if you are struggling, then, then speak to them because... Uh, yeah, I think a, I heard. I think I saw one before as well, where somebody's somebody a, a dealer had died unexpectedly in the charity family financially because yeah. obviously just overnight there were you know. Well, it made me, no it made me think so much because obviously you know a lot. I know a lot about our business, and so does my dad. But if he went, you know, he's sixty one. If anything happened to him and he went tomorrow, there's only so much I'd be able to do without him. And obviously, the guy that I bought five cars off. He's having to sell this. I think they're on. The, I think they're on stock and loans and stuff like that. And I think he's having to clear the decks and and see what happens with the business and then maybe start. Yeah, I think the, I think the chap wasn't a dealer, was he? His dad was, but he wasn't. So he was oh, kind right. of left well, with, that's even. I don't know. I, I think I might have misunderstood that, but I got the feeling that he wasn't actually even from the industry. So oh, right. obviously his dad had gone, and suddenly he had all these cars, like you say, and stocking loans in place, and yeah. and was kind of like didn't you know was just trying to trying to help the family out and get everything squared away. So I know it's tough. So I thought, well, it, you know, they are the motor trade charity. So if you are struggling, then hundred percent, we'll put the link on the screen, or I'll put something up. I did. I was just trying to find it. I did do a video before where I sort of talked about mental health in the motor trade, and I sort of said about them, and they because they have got like loads of free resources. Doesn't matter if you're in the trade now or used to work in the trade. Yeah. Um. Yeah, they're there to help. And like they say, with the bangers for Ben. Um. And I'm hoping next year we might do some kind of dealer chat rally and we'll do something to raise money and we in fact we've, we've with some of the um raffles that we've done with feel good competitions as well we've done it in aid of ben because you know it's again it's a bit of an unloved um industry isn't it car dealers you only yeah, got I mean, we're, one, we're, one youtube we're video dogs, and... yeah. we're the lowest of the low aren't we really in terms of people still say half a daily yeah. and all this sort of stuff and you go back yeah, and yeah. Like, you have, I mean, you have got to, I mean, we, we, like you said, Theo, we do joke about it, but you have got to be incredibly resilient in this. You can come into work and be, you know, thousands and thousands of pounds down. If there's been a stock adjustment on cars, you come in in the beginning of the month, you could be 10 grand down on the forecourt, 20, 30 grand down on the forecourt. Yeah. Then you've got your warranty claims coming in behind and you're trying to do with that. And all the time, people are telling you the worst of the worst. And it's so all although we joke about it, if you if if you get into this game, you don't have that resilience. It could get, I can imagine it could yeah. get on top of you really quite quickly yeah and, no, and obviously i mean we're really fortunate we don't have stock in and stuff like that but i mean if you have stock in loans and it does go quiet yeah. and then the warranty claims start hitting and christ it it, it can very quickly you know you can have a really, and it always really comes one. in waves you know i get it um you know I, I take antidepressants and bloody um like beta blockers every day to keep depression and anxiety under control that's just just how i'm wired up but you have those days where Something it's not been a great day, and then something else comes, and another yeah. warranty call comes, and you just go home and you're just like, oh, why do why, I? Why am I doing this? So, sometimes I'll drive home. I mean, I'm lucky I've got half an hour where I can drive home, and that's where I sort of, you know, that is where I chill out. So I get home and, you know, put my boy to bed, and I'll try and be, you know, nice and happy in that when I get home. But you get that half an hour just to sort of decompress, I suppose. 
Um, but but then you come back the next day, you sell five cars, and everything's amazing again, isn't it? So yeah. it is. Yeah. yeah. And you know, <laughs> none of those problems usually are insurmountable, are they? And that's why, yeah. if anyone you know is feeling like that, feel free to reach out to me. I'm sure the rest of you would be the same. Yeah. Drop us an email. Yeah. It's much better to kind of feel stupid or whatever however you feel about reaching out and saying i'm really struggling and i am, am i doing it all wrong or whatever yeah. then you know yeah, definitely yeah, sometimes out, you need you know. need someone else from the outside to i've yeah. had calls out from since i started the channel from people that started out and they've had their first problems with you know broken cars warranty claims people being unreasonable yeah and um when you step back from it, you say look this is all da, 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 you know they get back to you and they say do you know what? that was actually a lot more simpler to solve than i thought it wasn't actually the customers ended up being quite reasonable when we come to this compromise, but it can it can get all on, on top of you quite badly, can't it? And no, like I say, no one around you, other car dealers will help you out, but no one around you wants to hear about a car dealer's problems with a warranty claim or no. something, do they? As, as soon as you've shared shared a problem, it, it halves. You know, as soon as you talk, everything's okay. But I mean, I know everyone will be looking at thinking, oh, oh, these lads here, they're all like resilient and they don't get down. But like Joe's just said there, and, and even me. There's been times where I felt like giving up before Christmas. I just thought, why am I doing this? You know, I could just sell all the cars and do something. Yeah, just be a postman. <laughs> just... Yeah. See, one of, my, one of my best mates, Johnny, he is a postman. And I look at him and I think, he's living the simple life. You know, what? why do we do this? Why do we put ourselves through it? But I think the, the problem is the highs outweigh the lows. So you're always yeah. chasing that high. You know, like you yeah. say, you sell five cars in a day. There's no better feeling in the world. Yeah, yeah. So, but yeah. people just, as long as everyone talks with each other and, and doesn't having it rattling about in the brain. It's perspective. Someone together. else gives you perspective. That's the problem I always find is it's like, it's worse. It's really the worst yeah. thing, the worst thing. And then I've got very good now with my sort of coping strategies. You kind of just sit back and you think, this is a nightmare with warranties and whatever, but it'll be past next month. I won't even be thinking about this. Month. Exactly. I've forgotten about it. Yeah. And that's what you need to try and remember. Oh, but... Rather than it's just like, oh, there's there's no good way out. What's the worst thing that can happen? You buy the car back, you fix it, and then you sell it again. And yeah. that's it. Exactly. It's just part, when you're in it. You can do it. When you're in it, isn't it? And it's like the fourth thing that's happened that day. And you're like, oh. Yeah. 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 And, the, and the people and the people are, are you know, they, they, they want an answer within an hour. They're just ba 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 ba. Do you know what I mean? And if you've got two or three of those on the go, your day can be terrible. Just people bombard. You know, ten minutes later, wanting to know what the solution is. And you're like, oh, it doesn't work that quickly, does it? I think it comes with time and experience, though. The longer you do it, the more yeah. you get used to these things yeah. happening. You can yeah. stronger yeah. you get. Put it behind you. That's the thing. You don't. I, that's I, the thing, I, I think distract. that's the thing as well. Go on. Sorry. Well, I was going to say, say the stronger you get. I think some people find salespeople sometimes uh, car dealers a bit abrupt sometimes but another thing you need to do is you do need to shut people down sometimes that are mm. being too demanding uh, are gonna if you let them put you under that kind of pressure it will get on top of you sometimes you've got to say no hang far this is the way it's done this is the way we work through it mm. if you let them if you just say yes to everything and you to try and please everyone you will end up letting everyone down and also just creating huge pressure for yourself sometimes, oh, yeah, sometimes. you do need to say if no. you've got those tricky customers, the best way you can handle it. And sometimes I hear my staff speaking with someone, I'm like, put me on. And you have a word with me and say, look, we're doing everything we can, but we're not magicians. You know, we'll, we'll try and fix it as fast as we can. We're giving you a courtesy card. There's literally nothing else we can do. And yeah. when I started out doing this, I would have still been stressed. They need that car. They're going to want to refund it. I'm going to have to pay them. I'm going to, oh, where will I get the money? All that sort of stuff. Whereas now I'm just a bit like, this it'll all get resolved and yeah. you know it's just emotions involved just try and think, all you can do is be reasonable and tell them everything you're doing that is the thing about cars though isn't it? it it is a lot of emotions like you'll only ever get a five-star review or a one-star review there's never anything yeah. between yeah. Yeah. because yeah, that's right that you know if people can't get to work all of a sudden because you sold them a car last week and something's happening which even you could never foresee you know we're not we can't see into the future can we with these things but uh, you know you still it is always emotions with cars. So people do come in ranting, ranting and raving. And yeah. That's what I always think on. about putting on the warranty on the warranty book at the bottom. You know, we do know things go wrong with these cars. So if it does, just be nice with us. Yeah. yeah. That's, yeah. What, that's the other thing we've got is our sort of car dealer reputation is it works against us in so many different ways because the amount of times you've had someone phone up and they're like, my car's done this and now the window won't go down and uh, and and then at the same time it's struggled to start this morning and you know what are you going to do about it and I shouldn't have had that and you're like, oh, hold up, what's happened? They're like, oh, well, the window won't go down. It's like, okay, all right, no problem. 
drive it in right now and we'll look at it. Even if we haven't got a mechanic here, we'll, we'll, we'll chuck a battery on or whatever it needs or check the window for you. We'll do that. Don't worry. That's why you bought it from a garage. They're like, oh, all right. They just think because you're a dodgy dealer, they're already up for a fight. Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 I, one of the final things I'll always say in a sale is I'll say, look, don't judge me on whether the car goes wrong or not. It's got thousands of components on it and you're going to now go and use it every single day and i've test driven it for an hour so odds on are it's 10 years old it's done seventy thousand miles something will go wrong with it so don't judge me on whether something goes wrong with it or not judge me on how i behave when it does yeah. that's how you judge a dealer yeah. on what they do for you when you have the problem not that you're not going to have a problem you may well not have a problem you might be lucky but this is an older car there's thousands of components. Like you say, Dave, I don't have a crystal ball. If I could, I wouldn't do this. I'd do lottery tickets. I cannot tell you what might possibly go wrong. All I can say is, if it does, I'll look after you. Yeah. yeah That's what people say, oh, it's not going to break down on me, is it? It's not going to have any problems. And I, my, when I used to sell, I was just like, I have no idea. I can't seem to be sure. It, it is a used car. It's not even a new car. So something could go wrong. But just remember that customer service doesn't come into play until something does go wrong it's easy to tell a car and everything be fine you never hear from us again it's when you phone us up we'll, we'll take care of you you know people yeah. i actively ask for reviews from other people have had a problem with the car and i've sorted that's it yeah because yeah, i yeah, say yeah. that is going to be the best review i can ever have it went wrong but he sorted it because like you say anyone can do a review an hour after they bought a car and go yeah. i bloody love my car can't they yeah. the difference is if <laughs> in three months time they still love the car because you sorted out if there's been a problem